Hey there, fellow Americans. We know winter is around the corner, and with the way things are going, the power grid could be in real trouble. We're here today to talk about 10 critical steps you can take to keep your home safe and your family warm, especially if the grid goes down. This isn't just a maybe situation. It's time to get serious and be prepared. So let's dive right in. Step 1. Insulate your home now. All right, folks, let's get real here. When the grid goes down and the temperatures start plummeting, the last thing you want is your hard-earned heat escaping out of every crack and crevice in your home. And let me tell you, if you haven't checked your insulation recently, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. This is your first line of defense against the brutal cold. Now, I'm not just talking about grabbing a blanket or two. I'm talking full-on prepping your home like your life depends on it. Because, well, it just might. Go to every single window and door in your house. Put your hand up close and feel for any kind of draft. Even the tiniest bit of air coming through is a sign that heat is leaking out. And trust me, you can't afford to lose even a little bit when the power's out. What do you do about it? It's simple. Weather stripping, heavy curtains, bubble wrap on the windows if you have to. Yep, you heard me right. Cheap, effective, and you can get it at any hardware store. You've probably seen it used for shipping fragile stuff, but it works wonders to trap heat in. Don't forget about draft stoppers at the base of your doors. Get those in place or even roll up towels if you're in a pinch. Let's talk about attic insulation too. Heat rises, and if your attic isn't properly insulated, guess where all that precious warmth is going? That's right, straight out the roof. You might as well be throwing dollar bills out the window. So if you haven't already, get up there and check the insulation. Add more if necessary, because once the power's out, you're going to wish you had. And listen, you want to go the extra mile? You can even hang thick blankets or quilts over your windows and doorways inside. It might not look pretty, but who cares? When the temperatures drop below freezing, aesthetics are the last thing on your mind. Keeping that warmth inside is all that matters, and this will help create a barrier between you and the cold, turning your living space into a cozy fortress. We're talking about taking the same kind of precautions that the pioneers did. No electricity, just good old-fashioned insulation techniques to survive the cold. Every bit of warmth counts, and if you wait until the power's already out to start doing this, you're going to regret it. Step 2. Get a backup heating source. This is probably the most important step when we're talking about staying alive through a winter power outage. If you don't have a backup heating source, you're not just going to be uncomfortable. You could be in serious danger. Hypothermia can set in faster than you think. And trust me, the cold shows no mercy. So what's your plan? You better have one. First things first. If you're lucky enough to have a fireplace, congratulations. But don't think you're off the hook yet. You need to make sure it's cleaned and ready to go. Get that chimney swept, and I'm not talking about waiting until the last minute either. Do it now. You don't want a cozy fire turning into a chimney fire because you neglected a basic safety check, and stockpile that firewood like your life depends on it. Because honestly, it might. You should have at least a few cords ready to go. That wood pile out back? Double it. No fireplace? Don't panic. You've got other options, but you need to act fast. A propane heater that's safe for indoor use is a must. Don't skimp on this. You need something reliable, because when the power's down, the stores are empty, and the roads are closed, you're going to wish you had it. Make sure you've got plenty of fuel, too. Stockpile those propane tanks like you're prepping for a long, cold war. And here's a pro tip. Test it out. Don't wait until you're freezing to figure out how to use it. Practice using that heater now, make sure it's working, and understand exactly how to ventilate your space properly to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. And listen, for those of you without a wood stove or fireplace, you can even go old school with kerosene heaters. But safety first, people. Make sure you've got the right ventilation and always have a carbon monoxide detector. Those little alarms could be the difference between life and death. The cold is bad, but breathing in toxic fumes is worse. Now, you really want to take things up a notch? Consider installing a wood-burning stove. I know, I know, it's an investment, but think about it. When the grid is down and your neighbors are shivering under blankets, you could be sitting by a roaring fire, toasty warm, sipping hot cocoa like it's just another winter night. That's peace of mind you can't put a price on. But here's the kicker. 
fuel. No matter what heating source you have, it's useless without fuel. Stock up on wood, propane, kerosene, whatever you need. Not just enough for a couple of days, we're talking weeks. You don't know how long the power might be out. Think worst case scenario here, because once the grid is down, it's too late to stock up. Be smart and plan for the long haul. Step three, layer up. Wear the right clothing indoors. When the grid goes down in the dead of winter and the temperature in your house drops like a rock, you're not going to be walking around in your favorite hoodie and some fuzzy socks. We're talking survival mode here. You need to dress like you're about to climb Mount Everest inside your own living room. This isn't the time to be stylish. It's the time to be smart. First thing you need to do, layer, layer, and layer again. If you think one sweater is going to cut it, think again. You want to trap that body heat like your life depends on it, because it does. Start with a moisture wicking base layer. You don't want cotton, no matter how cozy it feels at first. Cotton absorbs moisture, and if you sweat, it'll hold that moisture close to your skin, making you colder. Go for synthetic or wool base layers that pull moisture away from your body and keep you dry. Trust me, this is survival 101. Next, throw on a mid layer. We're talking fleece, wool, or even down. These materials are designed to trap heat and keep it close to your body. You should feel like a walking furnace by the time you're done, but don't stop there. Top it off with a thick wind-blocking outer layer like a parka or a winter jacket. Yes, even indoors. You need to pretend like your house is as cold as the Arctic tundra because if the power stays out long enough, it just might be. Now, let's talk about your extremities. Don't even think about letting your fingers and toes go numb. Frostbite can set in before you know it, and you'll be in serious trouble. Get yourself some thick wool socks, double them up if you need to, and don't forget insulated slippers or boots. You're not lounging around the house here. You're staying alive. Gloves are non-negotiable. I don't care if you're just watching TV or trying to sleep. Keep those fingers covered. And don't even get me started on hats. You lose a ton of heat through your head, so slap on a beanie or wool hat and wear it at all times. Oh, and one more thing. You're not going to like this, but you need to sleep in these layers too. That's right. No more cozy pajamas or slipping into bed without socks. You're going to want to be fully dressed, maybe even in a sleeping bag, because once the temperature in your house drops, your bed isn't going to save you unless you're properly insulated. Wear all those layers to bed. Thermal tops, long johns, the whole shebang. If you want to get fancy, Use a Mylar emergency blanket inside your sleeping bag to reflect your body heat back onto you. Also, keep moving. Sitting around might seem like the cozy thing to do, but it's not going to keep you warm. Get up, stretch, do some light exercises, anything to keep your blood circulating and your body generating heat. Staying active will keep you from feeling the cold creep in when the heat's long gone. Step 4. Create a designated warm room. Okay, listen up. This step is an absolute game changer. When the grid goes down and your entire house starts to feel like a walk-in freezer, you're not going to be able to heat every room. That's a fact. So, what do you do? You pick one room? Yes, just one. And you turn it into your fortress of warmth. This is where you and your family will ride out the cold, and it's going to make all the difference. Start by picking the smallest room that makes sense. Ideally, you want a room with the fewest windows and external walls. If you've got a room in the middle of your house, jackpot. The less exposure to the outside, the easier it is to keep the heat trapped in. Once you've picked your room, it's time to seal it up like you're preparing for a deep freeze because that's exactly what's coming. First, cover those windows. Use heavy blankets, quilts, or even thick towels to block out any cold air sneaking through. Don't underestimate this. Even if your windows don't feel drafty now, trust me. Once the temperature drops, you'll notice that cold air creeping in. And if you've got bubble wrap or plastic sheeting, use it. Tape it directly over the windows for an extra layer of insulation. You're basically turning this room into a survival cocoon. Next, block off the doors. Roll up towels or use draft stoppers to seal the bottoms of the doors. And here's a trick. Hang blankets over the doorways inside the room as well creating extra barriers between you and the cold. You're creating layers of insulation, just like with your clothing, 
to trap every last bit of heat inside. Now, get all the bedding and blankets you can find and make this room cozy. Set up mattresses, sleeping bags, and anything that will help create a warm, insulated sleeping area. You can even set up a tent inside your warm room. Yes, you heard that right. A tent will trap even more heat, making it feel like a cozy little cabin within your room. It's not about looking pretty, it's about survival. When temperatures drop to deadly levels, this little trick could save your life. And remember, the more bodies in the room, the better. Your collective body heat is one of the most powerful heat sources you've got. Keep your family together in this warm room, and you'll be much better off than trying to heat the entire house. Step 5. Stock up on easy-to-prepare foods. Alright, now we're getting to something that's just as crucial as staying warm, staying fed. When the grid goes down, you need to have food that doesn't require electricity or hours of preparation. This isn't the time for gourmet meals, folks. You need quick, easy, and most importantly, no-cook options. Why? Because once that power's out, you won't be firing up the microwave or turning on your electric stove. First things first, canned goods. We're talking about canned soups, stews, beans, vegetables, and meats. You want stuff that's ready to eat straight out of the can if necessary. Yes, you can eat that chili cold, and no, it won't be a five-star dining experience, but it will keep you alive and fueled. And let me be crystal clear here. Don't forget the manual can opener. If the power's out and all you've got is an electric can opener, you're going to be staring at your food like it's on lockdown. Next, don't underestimate the power of shelf-stable foods. Peanut butter, nuts, dried fruits, granola bars, crackers, these are your survival snacks. They're high in calories, which is exactly what you need to keep your body generating heat. Calories equal sign energy equal sign warmth. And right now, warmth is everything. You're also going to want to invest in a portable stove or a butane burner. This isn't optional if you want to heat water or cook anything that needs more than just opening a package. A butane stove can be a lifesaver, especially for things like making hot drinks or soups when the cold starts creeping in. It'll give you that little morale boost you desperately need when the power's been out for days. But be safe with it. Make sure you're using it in a well-ventilated area. You don't need carbon monoxide poisoning on top of everything else. Now let's talk about water. You might think you're covered with your tap, but if the grid's down long enough, water systems can fail too. You need to have at least one gallon of water per person, per day stored up. That's the bare minimum. And if you run out, learn how to purify water from sources like melted snow. Get yourself a portable water filter or purification tablets so you can make any water source safe to drink. Don't take chances with dirty water. One stomach bug and you're done for. Step six, water. Store it and have a way to purify more. All right, folks, let's get something straight. You can survive without food for weeks if you had to, but without water, you're looking at three days tops. And in a grid down winter scenario, water is going to be one of your biggest challenges. When the power goes out, so could your water supply. And if you're not ready for that, you're putting yourself and your family in serious danger. You think running out of toilet paper was bad? Try running out of water. Here's the deal. You need to stockpile water now. Don't wait for the first snowstorm to hit before you start thinking about how to get clean water. You need a bare minimum of one gallon per person per day for drinking, cooking, and basic sanitation. And remember, that's the minimum. If you can store more, do it. Aim for at least a two-week supply, but honestly, if you can store a month's worth, do it. Store it in food-grade containers, water jugs, or even repurposed bottles if you have to. But make sure they're clean and sealed tight. Now let's say you run out of your stored water supply. What then? Don't panic. You need to have a way to purify more water. And I'm not talking about just boiling it, although that's a great backup plan. You're going to need a portable water filter, like a Berkey or a Life Straw or even purification tablets. These are essential items, people. Don't get caught without them. And if things get really bad, don't forget. Snow is technically water, but you can't just eat it or melt it down and drink it right away. Melt it, boil it, and filter it first. Eating snow will lower your body temperature, and the last thing you need is to give yourself hypothermia in the middle of a blackout. Collect snow in buckets, melt it down slowly, 
and run it through your filter before drinking. Every drop counts in a survival situation. Pro tip, fill up your bathtub before the grid goes down. That water can be used for washing or flushing the toilet if the pipes run dry. If your pipes freeze, you'll be glad you had that backup ready. You can even use it to boil for drinking if necessary. The point is, when the power's out, you need to treat every ounce of water like gold. Step 7. Use Mylar blankets to trap heat. Okay, I'm about to let you in on one of the simplest yet most effective ways to stay warm when the grid goes down. Mylar blankets. These little things are an absolute game changer in survival situations. They're dirt cheap, they weigh next to nothing, and they reflect up to 90% of your body heat right back at you. In other words, these are your best friend when your house turns into an icebox. So, here's what you need to do. Stock up on Mylar blankets right now. Don't wait until the grid's down and Amazon's out of stock. Buy them in bulk and keep them in your emergency kit, your car, your bug out bag. Heck, even keep one in your pocket if you can. When the temperatures start dropping and you're layering up, throw one of these bad boys over your clothes or inside your sleeping bag. It'll trap your body heat and keep it right where it belongs, with you. You can use Mylar blankets to line your walls in that designated warm room we talked about. That's right. Tape those blankets up on the walls and windows, and you're essentially creating an insulated bubble. It might not look pretty, but when it's freezing outside, you won't care. That shiny silver lining is going to bounce every bit of warmth back into the room, making it feel at least 10 degrees warmer than it would be without it. You can wrap Mylar blankets around water pipes to keep them from freezing, or even use them to cover the ground if you're setting up an emergency tent or sleeping area. Every little bit helps when you're in survival mode. The key here is efficiency. Mylar is all about taking the heat your body is already producing and keeping it from escaping. It's basically turning you into a human furnace. Step 8. Battery-powered lighting and backup chargers. All right, folks, this one's a no-brainer, but you'd be shocked at how many people forget about it. When the grid goes down, the lights go out. You're not going to be stumbling around in the dark, are you? No way. You need to be ready with battery-powered lighting, and trust me, flashlights aren't enough. We're talking about a full arsenal of lighting options, because once the sun sets, it's going to get real dark, real fast. Make sure you've got flashlights. And I don't mean just one. You need a flashlight in every room, one for each family member, and a few extras stashed away just in case. Headlamps are an absolute game-changer, too. If you're trying to fix something or move around in the dark, you don't want to be fumbling with a flashlight in one hand. Get those hands free with a solid headlamp. But here's the key. Batteries. Don't just assume the batteries in your flashlight are going to last. Stockpile extra batteries like your life depends on it. You want AA, AAA, and any other type of battery that powers your lighting gear. Get rechargeable ones if you can, but have some standard alkaline backups too. And don't forget to rotate your batteries. The last thing you want is to pull out a flashlight during an outage and find that the batteries are dead because you left them in there too long. Now let's get serious. You need backup chargers. Those portable power banks you see at the checkout counter? Buy a bunch of them. I'm talking multiple power banks. Fully charge them now, because once the grid goes down, you're going to want to keep your phone, radios, and any other small devices running. And if you're smart, get a solar-powered charger. Sure, winter means fewer daylight hours, but every bit of sunlight you can use to charge your devices counts. Get some solar-powered or crank-powered lanterns, too. These will provide ambient light in your warm room without draining precious battery power. You can hang them up, light up a whole area, and keep things safe and functional without burning through your backup energy. These lanterns are perfect for long-term outages because they rely on the one thing that's still free, sunlight. Step 9. Emergency Shelter Solutions You hope you never have to leave your home during a grid-down winter situation, but if things go south, like a busted pipe floods your home or it becomes unsafe for some reason, you've got to have a backup plan for shelter. This is not optional. If you're forced to evacuate, you need to have emergency shelter options that will keep you and your family safe from the cold. Invest in a heavy-duty tent, not your summer camping tent, I'm talking about a tent that can withstand freezing temperatures and snow if necessary. Get one that's designed for winter camping or extreme conditions. You might be setting this up inside your house, yes, inside, 
or worst case scenario, outside in the elements. This tent is going to be your last line of defense if your house becomes uninhabitable, so don't skimp on quality. And here's a tip most people don't think about, tarps and thermal blankets. If you do have to set up an outdoor shelter, or even if you're using your tent indoors, you'll want to throw a tarp over it for extra insulation. You can also line the inside with mylar blankets, like we mentioned earlier, to trap more heat. If you're outside, a tarp can act as a windbreak or ground cover to keep moisture and cold out of your living space. Don't forget about sleeping bags either. And I'm not talking about the kind you bring to a summer camp. You need sleeping bags rated for extreme cold, preferably zero degrees Fahrenheit or lower. You'll be wrapping up in those bags, potentially for days, and they're your best bet for keeping warm if the worst happens. Combine that with a Mylar blanket inside, and you'll stay much warmer than you think. Step 10. Prepare your mind and your spirit. All right, this is the big one. And if you think it's not as important as the others, you're dead wrong. When the grid goes down and everything feels like it's falling apart, your mindset will make or break you. You need to be mentally and emotionally prepared for the stress, the cold, and the isolation that might come with a long-term winter outage. Survival isn't just about having the right gear. It's about staying calm, focused, and ready to face whatever comes your way. First, you need to accept that this is a real possibility. I know it's hard to imagine, but the grid going down isn't some far-off sci-fi scenario. It can happen, and when it does, you need to have your head in the game. Don't panic. Panic leads to bad decisions, and bad decisions can be deadly when you're facing a freezing house and no power. The best thing you can do for yourself and your family is to stay calm. Take a deep breath, assess the situation, and trust in the preparations you've made. You also need to keep your morale up. Long stretches without power, isolation from friends and neighbors, and the general stress of the situation can really wear you down. This is where mental toughness comes in. Stay busy. Whether it's doing small tasks to keep your home in order, playing games with your family, or just reading a book. Keeping your mind occupied will help pass the time and keep your spirits high. Speaking of spirits, let's talk about spiritual preparation. Whatever your beliefs, staying connected to a higher purpose or finding inner peace can make a huge difference when everything around you feels chaotic. Take time for reflection, meditation, or prayer. It'll help ground you and keep your perspective in check, especially during tough times. And here's the last piece of advice. Community matters. Stay in touch with your neighbors, family, and friends. If you've prepared together, you'll have a support system in place. Being able to help others or simply having someone to talk to can make a world of difference. Don't isolate yourself mentally, even if you're physically cut off from the world. We've laid out everything you need to do to survive when the grid goes down this winter. The question is, are you going to take action or are you just going to sit there and hope it doesn't happen? because hope isn't a plan. If you wait until the lights go out and the cold sets in, guess what? It's already too late. You'll be freezing in the dark, wondering why you didn't prepare when you had the chance. Look, this isn't a drill. We've given you the steps, 10 critical steps, to protect yourself, your family, and your home. But none of that means a damn thing if you don't get off the couch and do something about it. The grid will go down eventually. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So, take this seriously. Get your supplies in order, prepare your mind, and get ready to fight for your survival. Because when that power cuts off, the cold doesn't care if you were too busy to prepare. The time to act is right now. No more excuses. Or.